Howdy. Today we'll be going over how you can create an airfoil for a wing with just mathematical equations. There are a few different series of NACA airfoils, NACA being the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. Today we'll highlight the four series airfoils. First, we'll examine the anatomy of the airfoil. Starting forward to aft, we immediately have the leading edge. Going in the middle, we have the mean camera line, and going up, we have the upper surface of the airfoil. Going down, we have the lower surface. And all the way at the end, we have the trailing edge. There's one more line that we can scribe, and that is the flat line connecting the leading and trailing edge. This line is known as the cord line. The cord being the length of the wing from forward to aft. So the main idea behind the NACA airfoils is that there's some mean camber line and a thickness distribution along it. And that thickness is equal on both sides of the mean camber line to the surfaces. So before we can create the mean camber line, we need to decipher the NACA number. For the four series, the first digit describes a maximum camber as a percentage of the cord. And just as a side note, all the terms are normalized by the cord, so by default, if you were to look up these equations, they would more than likely be for a cord length of 1. But here we'll use a more generalized version to include any cord length. So the maximum camber digit is divided by 100. Thus, a NACA 9520 has a max camber of 9% of the cord. The next digit tells us the distance from the leading edge and tenths where the max thickness will be. So again, a NACA 9520 will have its max thickness at 50% of the cord. So now that we have where it is thickest, now we need to know how thick it will be there. The last two digits tell us that. Again, it is given as a percentage, so NACA 9520 will have 20% of the cord thickness at the max thickness location. And in the next animations, we'll see how these values change in airfoil. When varying M, if we bring it down to zero, we get what is referred to as a symmetrical wing, since there's no camber. And then whenever we're varying P, we're changing the location if there is a camber along the cord, which is why it looks like it's doing the worm. And then if whenever we're increasing big T, we're increasing the thickness of the overall airfoil. We will start with the mean camber line, but the thing is I should be saying mean camber lines. That's right, we need two equations to create the full curve. So a piecewise parametric curve, where one starts at zero and ends at P, and the other goes from P to the cord length. Here are the two polynomial y-coordinate equations that the committee settled on. Now, to put these in a parametric equation, we need the x-coordinates. Lucky for us, this is just the t-parameter. You can use x if you like. Plugging in these values into the t from 0 to p, we get the first half. Then values from p to the cord length, we get the second half. So with that, we only need the thickness distribution. And here is the polynomial equation the committee chose for their four series airfoils. So at any value of t from 0 to cord length, there will be some thickness above and below equal to this equation. But this airfoil I'm showing you now is not a NACA 4 series. This is an airfoil I made. So if we add the top surface and the bottom surface, then divide by 2, we get the mean camber line in purple. And at all points, the vertical values are equal above and below when measured perpendicular to the cord line. This is known as the British Convention. But NACA was an American committee, so they used the American Convention where now instead of adding the thickness perpendicular to the cord line, we now do it perpendicular to the mean camber line. So now we have some angle theta between these red lines, and that angle will be used later. So if we zoom in, we see instead of going all the way up, we go some cosine theta value up. Then we go some sine theta over. And this hypotenuse is our thickness equation value. The same is true for the lower surface. So finally, we're going to make the airfoil surfaces. We start with a foundation, the mean camber line. The upper surface has x coordinates of the cord length times t, while the y coordinates have the value of the cord length times the mean camber line equations. 
So we want to add the thickness equation, but we have to be careful since the equation is at an angle. So for the upper surface, since we went in the negative t direction, a distance of sine theta, we subtract the thickness equation times sine theta for the x coordinates. Similar reasoning can be applied to the other three coordinates, and we now have the equations for the parametric curves to create the airfoil. If you're wondering what theta is equal to, if you noticed, the angle is formed by the slope of the mean camber line and the chord line. So if you take the derivative of the mean camber line equations and toss them into the arctan, you get theta. Now, there is one little caveat to this airfoil series, and that it is not a closed airfoil. If we take a look at the trailing edge, our trailing edge point seems less of a point and more of a gap. This gap can be remedied by taking all the coefficients from the thickness equation and change one of the terms so that they equal zero. So if we make the fourth degree term 0 0.1036, we see it closes, which is sometimes necessary to mesh for CFD software, or you'll need to physically add a line segment connecting the two to close the airfoil. So there are ways to find the lift coefficients for these airfoils mathematically, but it's not that easy, and they're pretty much the same method as any other arbitrary airfoil. The, this four series was made in the early 1900s, and the later series included digits and equations to help predict these coefficients more effectively. Take the five series. The first digit here gives, well, not the coefficient of lift, it gives the theoretical optimal lift coefficient at an ideal angle of attack while more modern series, such as the 7 series, has digits to describe the location of minimum pressure area of the upper and lower surfaces, along with the lift coefficient. In the description, I have added the paper that I used to support the information in this video, and a Desmos graph I created so you can play with these equations yourself easily. If you enjoyed this video explaining the mathematics and geometry for the NACA 4 series airfoil, please like and subscribe. I plan to make more aerospace related videos in the future. And as a heads up, all that lies ahead of this video is just the animations from that paper of all the airfoils they used.